So the best thing about Embergen is how quickly you can make something that looks really cool and believable. And the second best thing about Embergen is it's got a free 14 day trial and it's really cheap to subscribe to after that. Hey, I'm Ben. I like blowing stuff up and setting fire to things. Uh, let's let's download Embergen and, and go blow some shit up. Welcome to Embergen. It's toasty warm in here. When, when you first open it up, it gives you this flaming donut for some reason um, and just starts playing the simulation. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just start clicking on stuff, right? Just see if you can move it around. Unfortunately, all you can really do is move the camera around. That, that's quite nice, I guess. Do that for a couple of hours. So let's have a tour of the interface. Uh, left hand side, you've got your viewport. Below that is your timeline. In truth, not much. Uh, of what you do is going to be on the left hand side it's really where you kind of look at things over on the right hand side we've got a node graph at the top and we've got our details of properties of the nodes that you select at the bottom this is where all of your decisions are made really um, to have a quick look at this node graph um, some of you might have used node graphs and other software it's basically like uh, an out machine really um, we'll start the left hand side with the things that we're putting into the simulation magic happens in the middle and then this is what the computer spits out at the other end. Um, so let's look at this this first one. This is the emitter. Look what happens when we turn off the emitter. The fire stops. It goes away. Turn it back on. The emitter is... Um, let's bring this back. When we click on the emitter, we get the properties of an object that has fuel, has heat, um, and has like emission values like pressure. Uh, where's pressure? Pressure's right here. If we ramp this up, it goes a bit nuts. That's like... We should make a bomb sometime. We should totally do that. Let's put it back to default. Um, but there's things feeding into this that, that tell it how to act. So we've got a shape. If we turn off the shape, there's no shape going to the emitter. It, it doesn't know what shape to be, so it's it's just not active. So we keep the shape on, but we can, we can change that shape. Um, that shape can be a primitive, which is just like a simple shape. And there's a, a whole list of them here. Uh, I quite like spheres. Because then you make like cool magic effects and force fields and shit. But you can like uh, create your own meshes in in Blender and Maya, or whatever, and bring those in. And they can be animated as well. So if you've got like a an FBX animated figure, um, you could have him wander around with his his head on fire, like Ghost Rider or something like that. Underneath that, we've got a force going into the emitter as well, which is a noise force, and that's that's always useful because it makes things a bit more believable, a bit more natural looking. If we turn it off, you'll see right away that it just it just sort of goes straight up there's it's not much to look at there there's a bit of curling in the fire and stuff but it looks less real so if we turn that noise force back on uh we can mess around with the scale of that so if we bring it down to like one it'd probably be a bit hard to pick up on but you can see it here like creeping up the sides of this sphere when we bring this up it sort of grows in scale also notice that Nothing is happening to the bottom of our sphere. And that's because that sphere lies outside of the bounds of our Embergen simulation. And like the bounds is uh, it's like a volume of space, typically a cube. I think probably always a cube. And that is the only area in which Embergen or other simulation software is going to worry about what's happening. It's just going to ignore everything outside of that. If it tried to simulate everything outside of it, it would be like your computer trying to simulate the entire natural world. And it's just don't ask your computer to do that let's bring out the bounding box and you'll see what i mean this is the area in which embergen is is actually thinking about stuff so we want to see all of our sphere we can select the primitive bring them up a bit and now we can see the bottom of the sphere which is good notice how it's quite a tall bounding box so we can see what's going on with the smoke if we weren't too fussed about the smoke we could maybe shrink that that bounding box down a bit uh but no we'll, we'll mess around with the smoke a bit um, there's there's a juggling act with this stuff where you want to keep the the bounding box as tight in on the simulation as you can because that's what keeps it fast but you never want to be clipping the sides of it so to show you what i mean let's ramp up that pressure again and you'll see there's a hard edge to it now where it's it's actually it's button up the the edge of this this bounding box and then embergen's just ignoring everything after that let's bring that back to where it was let's make something let's make like some weird blue magical fireball thing let's first of all hide that gray clay ball yeah that do um and i kind of want to punch a hole in the middle of it like just have a little hollow area so we can do that with a collider 
we got our, our simulation node. Let's, um, let's just go through the chain real quick. Here's our emitter. It's where we decide what shape it is, how much fuel there is, how fast it's pouring into the scene, like how violent it is. Uh, and that feeds into the simulation. And that's, that's like the brain of the operation here. That's where you decide uh, what sort of gravity there is, how buoyant the, 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 the fire is. Um, we've got an input here. So we can put a collider into our simulation. So let's let's drag this pin out from here. Select collider. And then much like the emitter, it requires a shape, right? And so does our collider. So let's let's pull our pin out from there. And then it, it's made a shape. It just happens to be the same size as the emitter. So not much is happening. If we bring down the uh, the size of this sphere, Something like that. That looks good. And then we'll hide our collider. So, in fact, if I turn off the background, let's get rid of the ground, get rid of the sky box, so we just got black. And get rid of the bounded box. So there's actually like, there's an empty sphere in the middle of that somewhere. And we can start dialing in the look of the fire. So we've got our volume and shading nodes here. These guys are fun and all, but I typically turn off the background and the ground. I might mess with the lighting a bit, but I'm really interested in like the shading, the color, the emission, uh, and the volume, which is like the like the visual properties of the flames in the smoke. How like how sharp they are, how translucent they are. So let's let's change up some color first. Let's go to let's look at the smoke. We can turn the smoke on or off. Right? You might just want fire in your effect. Smoke generally helps things, though. Uh, but we can change the color of that smoke. Let's make it bright green. Looks f***ing horrible. So let's let's not do that. Let's change the color of the fire and see if we can get the fire to influence the color of the smoke. So let's do that. Go to our flames. So we've got this fire color here. Just allows you to pick one color. It's pretty. It's pretty boring. I mean, it looks nice, but. Maybe you want like a bit more finite control over it. Let's switch this up to an exposed color gradient. It all goes black, but we can, where is he? Drag a pin out from this new part of the node and choose this color gradient. Notice how this, uh, this color gradient here is now dictating what color the fire should be. Let's, uh, let's add a couple of bits into it. Let's make like, we want the flames to be bright white at the beginning and then to like a pale blue, maybe a darker bluish purple and then to black. So let's see how that goes. Uh, pale blue there. And darker bluey purple. That's not too bad. Maybe there's too much white. So if you start dragging these guys around, that's good. Kind of like that. Um, and also the purple. So I think in a minute we can get some of this light going into the smoke. What happens if we just turn off the flames? Yeah, there we go. Right, so I think now we've got some light going into the smoke. Let's turn off the ambient light, the directional light, and we can prove it by turning off the fire. And what you're looking at is the smoke that's being lit by the fire. Which looks quite nice, I think. It's it's quite puffy though, there's not much definition to it, so we can mess around with that. So one of the ways you can do that is to up the resolution of the sim. So tell the computer to put more thought into the, the detail of what it's producing on screen. Or you can mess around with the the properties of the volume. So you can tell it to be a little bit sharper in there. Let's have a look at sharpen post process. Let's start dragging some of these guys around. It kind of does the job, it gives you a bit more definition, but it starts to break down at a certain point because we are actually quite low resolution at the moment. So let's let's up that a bit in our simulation node. We are 
128 voxels by 128 voxels and then 256 voxels that way and that is the bounding box that we were looking at so the voxels are the tiny cubes that the computer is uh, driving the simulation in I think like minecraft it's, it's kind of like that so 128 this way 128 this way 256 this way so what we're going to do is we're going to upscale it which kind of just times it by two so instead it will be 256 256 and then 512 up let's try that so times two you notice that it goes a bit slower because it's it's literally doing loads more but the fidelity that you get is much greater so there's our weird magical burning plasma ball i'm sure there's a couple of things that we can do for this as well yeah i've got an idea let's turn off our upscale go back to like normal scale just so we can see it moving fluidly i'm going to make it a little bit wider in y so let's go 220 should make the bounded box a bit wider there we go and it will slow the simulation down a little bit but not by a huge amount I'm going to get our sphere, bring him down. Good. Uh, and then in our simulation, we can mess around with like a uh, sort of bit of chaotic wind to get that, that smoke moving to the side or something. Let's find wind. Uh, let's move it in the Y direction. Go back. Wind speed, let's just say like one. Right, so it's moving it all off that way. Um, but it's it's like it's it's always going to be going that way. You don't you kind of want it to move around a bit and also not be quite as crazy. Let's let's knock this down to like point one. Should calm it down a bit. It's pretty good. Uh but the wind chaos. Let's try that. Let's try like one there. Maybe a bit higher like fun right and then sometimes it's going to be going off to the side sometimes it's going to come back it might go back that way that can really help to sell a fire effect because you know most fires are going to be outside and outside there's always a certain amount of wind and atmospheric pressure moving things around um, it's getting a little bit nuts now though look at that let's um let's also let's play with shredding shredding let's mess around with that so let's just let's plug a crazy number in there like 999 you see how it's now it's pushing things outwards and that's the hot bits of the fire literally pushing bits out let's see something a bit more subtle like 22 and you'll see that when there's like a, a little bubble of action in this fire it, it suddenly flutters outwards a little bit and that's cool i quite like that right so the the moving around of that smoke and stuff is pretty cool, but it's it's now obviously hitting the boundaries of the simulation. So if we turn off our bounding box, we can then see from time to time when it hits this edge, there's a hard edge. There it is. Right there. Um and we've got a couple of little tricks that we can use over in the volume node. And that is the slicing mask. And that says um where well you got your bounding box, um you can say you know, for like 10% out from this side of the bounding box, you can make things gradually more transparent. So you can kind of have this, this smoke, instead of hitting a hard edge, you can have it kind of fade out as it gets to that edge. <laughs> Let's find it. That should be Y positive. It's the offset. There's the width. So if we go with like 30, you should suddenly see it kind of disappear or fade out quite a bit. Nope. That's because I'm on Y negative. What a dick. Let's try this one. Hey. So, you know, you don't get such a hard edge when it gets there. Um, you might find playing games and, and stuff like that when you're looking at these explosive effects that you can kind of tell that it's been faded out, like forcefully faded out. Let's, um, let's apply this to that wall, that wall, the front and the back. Maybe the top. We're not really looking at the top, but... So what did I use there? That was 30. So you say 30. No, I didn't want to do the ground. Set the ground off because now that's saying um, 
when you're near the ground plane or when you're gonna fade out there. We don't we don't want that. Come back ground width. There we go. That's good. So that's pretty nifty. Um what else can we do to this guy? Let's slap some particles in. If we go to our volume rendering mode just for a second because it's fun to mess around with switch it to particles and you'll find it looks drastically different but instead of showing you a, a volume it's attaching loads and loads of points of light to those volumes and moving those around instead you know it's probably not what you're after but you can you can use this you can use them both together you could render out the particles separately and then add them in in post-production and maybe just have them affect the flames like like little sparks and tendrils and things um, and you can even comp them together in embergen so if we go hybrid it looks fucking nasty but if we change the kind of particles we're looking at a bit hard to see on this one but they are in there and each each point of light is actually just just brightening the image ever so slightly if we yeah, whack them up size wise there you can see it now in fact, we'll make them a bit bigger. There we go. See, look at that. Magic. That's how we make magic. See how it's kind of chugging a little bit now as well. It's like there's a lot more for the computer to think about. I mean, it's still a lot faster than the other ways that you would typically get these effects. But it's looking good. So. I'll make another video where we make a bomb. And just to take you through that real quick, I'm not gonna make the bomb now, but just to show you, if you start thinking in the way that Emergen works, you start to work out how you could make a bomb, right? We've got, let's get rid of our collider. Let's get rid of our particles, because we don't need those now. Polymetric. Let's get rid of the color gradient. And let's bring this back to what it was. There we go, right, just normal fire. All we're talking about here is the emitters and how they work. So the emitters, like I said before, deal with fuel, temperature, and pressure. So what if you had more than one emitter? You could have, there we go. You can put more than one emitter into a simulation, which is really useful, right? So you could have one emitter that at the beginning of the animation just dumps out a load of fuel right and its temperature is right down at zero so there's no risk of this fuel catching fire its, it's only job is to drop fuel into the scene and then like 100 frames later you have another emitter that's got no fuel and its job is to just be like a match um, and it's it's just about getting the temperature in that spot to go right up to the top and ignite the fuel that was dumped by the other emitter um, that's the way that i typically make explosions in emergen um, and that's what that's what the next video will be, I think. Uh, so like I was saying at the beginning of the video, um, it's free to download and try it out. You need a half decent gaming PC. You need a decent video card. Um, typically anything better than an NVIDIA 1080 Ti, which is what I originally used it on. It runs pretty well on anything after that. Uh, and Windows for now. I know there's a Linux version coming, but yeah, for now, Windows, half decent nvidia card i think there's like amd cards that are supported but i've got no experience with that side of things just download it mess around with it so anyway yeah uh next time we'll we make a bomb uh let's isn't it weird that we can say that let's make a bomb together it's a good way to spend a monday night uh and then maybe after that i'll show you how to export your simulations out of uh, embergen into something like after effects or davinci resolve uh, and then you can start putting these things onto, you know, your homemade movies. You can set your sister on fire or something. Uh, and yeah, yeah, we'll just, we'll keep going. If you get any requests for things you'd like to know about, hit me up, uh, like and subscribe and all that shit. Happy burning.